when you guys are talking about thermal design and how you're coming up with answers to those kind of problems as they come up, what do you, when you're talking about different workloads, what does that mean? What are you talking about? How does different workloads make different demands on the thermal dynamics of a system, things like that? It does. I'll, I'll take a first stab at this, then Mark, maybe you can chime in. So, so when we talk about workloads, typically at Dell, we characterize what a customer's doing. So how, how are they running? And I'll just use my favorite game, right? League of Legends with Discord, while they've got Chrome up with, say, <laughs> streaming audio, or maybe they're live streaming from a separate system, right? We actually look at all those different type of modes that the customers use those systems, then we characterize it. We can go in and look at power on the CPU, power on the GPU, power on the subsystems, then we characterize those workloads. And typically what you see is we work to optimize those systems. And so from a mobile perspective, concurrency is critical. How much energy do I give to the GPU versus the CPU to ensure the best optimized system or the best workload? For example, if you're running a GPU intensive application, it makes little sense. It actually can hurt you if you allocate too much power to the CPU. You want that power to be able for the frames per second, the frame rate coming from the GPU, and you want the CPU to have just enough power to feed the GPU. And this is where this comes into play. It's a fine dance between those two points. Now, Intel and even some of the GPU providers provide us tools that we can to optimize those workloads at runtime, but the cooling solution in the system dictates how much capacity I have, and then it's up to the control of the system to optimize that capacity at runtime. So if you're doing most games that we typically see, it's about a 5100 level. Loading. A lot of times you'll see 50% on the CPU. It can be 80 to 100% on the GPU. VR is kind of an odd one. As you start doing, um, let's say you've got an HTC Vive Pro and you're doing Skyrim, that can be much more intensive. And so we actually have a good characterization of all these different workloads. And then based upon the system, we design the cooling solution with feedback from Intel. What do they need to run their CPU at and optimize the size of the cooler, the size of the heat sink, and the system itself from battery sizing, memory capacity, voltage regulator, all that's done to optimize for the workload. And so, so I'm gonna, oh, go I'm sorry, I'm gonna interject here. Um, mm -hmm. Is there a way for those who might not understand exactly all of that terminology? Is there like a little surface level example you could give us by chance? Yeah, so, so if, if you, if, if for, from a, a CPU, well, Mark, why don't you take a stab at it, then I'll come back, because maybe you, you can explain <laughs> it a little better. I just got Travis better. passing it off. <laughs> yeah, I didn't see that bus coming. Right, so so let, me, let, me, let, me take a, let me take a shot. Um, so when, when, you're, when you're looking at the CPU itself, right, we've got different cores, which people have, we've talked about um, is, is in our newest generation parts, like we to have more cores so the work gets partitioned up onto the different compute domains that we have available and so the the big question is do you have when you have let's say travis has designed a system and it can support 100 watts total and we'll just use 100 watts because now the the math is easy right so out of that 100 watts total like some portion of that needs to go to the cpu for the compute cores and then some portion of it needs to go to the gpu and if we use the ratios travis was saying we would say okay roughly 30 watts of that goes to the cpu 70 watts of that goes to the gpu right now the, the question becomes as you're going through that game and you suddenly turn a corner in, in the in the world that you're exploring and now it has to render a whole new scene, right? That data needs to get from the CPU to the GPU. So now suddenly the cores need to do a little bit more work. So they might jump up a little bit, right? And so we're try constantly trying to balance the total power budget between all the compute domains within the system. So we stay within that 100 watts that we have total. Um, in order to give a nice smooth frame rate, a, a good user experience overall. And that 100 watts is also just an example to make the math easy. It's not saying there's yeah, only yeah, ever yeah, 100 yeah, watts. Yeah. Just, just <laughs> no, in case every, anybody is listening and they're like, there's only 100 watts. No, that's just an example to make the math easy for everybody to understand yeah. there. Yeah, no, um, we're much higher than 100 watts. Yeah, I can we're, tell you that. we're way <laughs> higher than that a lot of place now. Um, so when you're talking about kind of developing like a cooling solution that ties directly to the workloads that they're intended for people is that to say sometimes like you may see that maybe a system designed for rendering video at 24 7 or doing cad work is going to have different kind of thermal solutions than a gaming system because we expect kind of the gpu to have more power needed a lot of the times is that kind of what you're explaining there <laughs> 
you, you can, right? So, so the question comes down to is how much cooling capacity do we need for those specific workloads? So let's say someone is you know, CPU focused, right? And then the heat pipe placement, the fin stack placement, the fan placement, we would optimize off the CPU for that particular use case. Similarly for the GPU, but we actually balance both of those. We actually come in early in the system. We get the feedback from Intel. Let's say we just use NVIDIA as an example for a specific GPU. We get the requirements. Those requirements would be power, temperature, thermal resistance then off of that, we build out that system. So every system that we tune, and that's the great thing about Dell, the reason we have different product lines, those product lines are typically optimized for those specific workloads. If you want corporate type environment, right? Excel, Word, PowerPoint, et cetera, that's latitude. If you want high-end, say, precision workstation applications, CAD, CFD, FEA, even some rendering, right? So um, video editing, that's precision. Gaming, we are very focused on GPU capability and CPU. And so ensuring the threads from the CPU can feed the GPU, and then we have it optimized for the workload at hand. And that all comes into play from turbo performance, how the temperature responds from the CPU, to basically acoustics. And if it's a laptop, skin temperature. And if it's a desktop, it could be power from the power supply and optimizing all of that at runtime. 